the sun is shining the bike is gleaming it has a fresh mot for those that watch my video on the servicing and the little jobs i've done on this i'll put a link at the top if you didn't see it but i've done a few jobs on the h2 so this is my little initial test ride to see how everything is since i've done those jobs i've changed the uh, put rated clutch springs in i've changed the pads i fitted the turbo smart blow off valve <laughs> so this is your chance to hear that blow off valve. it's quite it's quite uh, it's quite mental well, hopefully it's going to come through on the video but um yeah it's a beautiful day it's about 20 degrees it is spring spring is in the air spring has literally sprung and i brought the h2 out to make the most of it have a little old ride and bring you along with me why not so sit back get yourself a cup of tea and chopsy roll the intro Right, I was just doing a lovely bit of drone footage and this person decided just to park right in front of me. Well, I had the drone flying around the bike and everything. Whole car park, could park in, decided to park right in front of me. As I mentioned, I've done a few jobs on this, so I'll just sort of give you a little update on how it's been. First of all, the, the main thing I wanted to sort, you know, apart from the oil change, obviously, was the clutch. The clutch used to bite right at the end of the lever. Now, this is a, an interesting junction. Hmm. I'm going to go for it. Thank you, wait there, thank you. Yeah, the clutch used to buy right at the end of the lever. Since I fitted the Brox uprated clutch springs, it's much better. It bites sort off of halfway out now, exactly where you want it to be. The issue was, you know, you'd be at a junction like that and you'd have to let the clutch all the way out until it bites. And because I, that's fine if you're used to the bike, but because I ride so many different bikes, it was always a pain when I first got on this. I'd have to relearn where the clutch bite is. So those that rated clutch springs have really sorted out the clutch feel, so that's brilliant. The other thing I was really unhappy about was the brakes. They were a bit, you know, they used to be quite flat. They're still bedding them in. I've not done many miles on them, so I'm trying to take it a little bit easy on the brakes. But already I could tell with minimal lever effort, it's stopping much easier. So I think those pads, I think they were the SBS Sintered pads, the R90s, I think. <laughs> they definitely deliver a lot more initial bite. I mean, the brakes worked, it was just lacking on initial bite. You'd have to pull the lever quite hard. I want to just have some decent bite with you know minimal effort on the lever. That seems to have sorted that. The other job I did, as I mentioned, was the blow off valve. Let's see if I can get it to sing for you. Exhaust, not the bar foul. Probably not the best place to try and demonstrate boosting it up. Ooh, lovely little pop. Here we go. Can you hear that? It now hisses at me. <laughs> the bike now hisses at me. listen to that that is the pressure because it's just supercharged obviously when you go on the power when you boost it up the, the boost pressure increases goes through the plenum into your uh, inlets whatever and when you close the throttle 
that boost is still there, it's got nowhere to go. So normally there's a little blow-off valve standard actually, which just boosts, which puts that air back through into the back of the air box. With this one, it vents it straight out to atmosphere so you can actually hear it. So that's what that, I mean, <laughs> it's a boosted by, I mean, it all adds to the drama of the machine, doesn't it? I mean, this bike is the complete polar opposite to the Zero I was riding the other day. The SRF, we had no volume whatsoever. This has every single sound you ever want from a motorcycle. I mean, it may be big and silly, but it's so much, it's so theat theatrical, this bike. It's such an experience to ride. Even though I don't do many miles on this, I just love taking this out when the weather's like this and just enjoying it. Seeing everyone's reaction to it as well is amazing. It gets so much attention. Afternoon sir. Oh, it's quite nice. It does it on the downshifts as well. That's quite nice. Bit of noise on the downshifts. As well as all the jobs I wanted doing, I also got this MOT and I was going to do a video of me riding to the MOT station for the first ride on this. Unfortunately, my uh, battery, I went out of the camera and I didn't bring any other batteries with me and the one I had in there was already flat so I started recording it, but I had to give up. But then I thought I don't really want to show the MOT station which I use because those guys are very, very sensible. And what I mean by sensible is they won't fail the bike for the little silly things like a slightly small number plate, you know, no reflector, little things like that. They're very, I say slack on, but they're sensible about it. And I didn't really want to show me, me taking the bike to them to bring any scrutiny on them. So I thought I won't do that video. I'll do this video instead. Six thousand revs, it just cuts out that psh noise. Oh, this thing's quick, absolutely ridiculously fast. <laughs> oh dear, it is. It is something else. This bike. I know I've been going on lately about all oh, middleweights, so oh, it's all you need on the road is a middleweight. I know. And everyone keeps commenting, says the man with the H2. <laughs> and my normal response to that is, well I should know. You know, I've got a I've got a 240 horsepower motorcycle. I should know when I say you don't need any more than this, because I've got the other extreme. And it is very true. I mean this bike is so fast, you know, you cannot you cannot use it without risking your license every time you ride it. I mean, it's a fantastic experience. It's a, it's a theatrical noise and whooshes and bangs and power and, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing to ride. But every time you ride it, <laughs> you put your license on the line because it is ridiculously quick. So you take, it takes a lot of self-control to just ride this round sensibly. I mean, it's good because it does have, you know, because it's supercharged, it's got a good bit of torque. It's not just all at the top end. So you're not chasing the revs to get the performance. You know, it, it's got the performance, even low down. So you don't feel like you need to rev it, you know. It's not like the new Fireblade, which is a little bit like that. It's all at the top. It's not, it's got dollops of torque. So you can ride it very sensibly, but it's just that power is addictive. Afternoon, afternoon. There's plenty of bikes out today. Afternoon. We've just come out of lockdown in the UK. I think it was yesterday was the first day whereby, afternoon, <laughs> people are allowed to meet up, you know, outside for rides and stuff. And as you can see, there's a lot of bikes out today. People making the most of it. But if you haven't been out yet, just be a little bit careful when you first go out because it take, even I, who've been riding quite a lot during lockdown because of YouTube, you know, it's my job, so I'm riding and test riding bikes. Even I, when I've jumped on something like this, you realise you're not quite tuned in to the speed, you know, not quite. 
just build the speeds up slowly and don't go out of a big group of people and then just go banzai because you, you just build it up slowly guys and uh, be careful there's plenty there's a whole long summer ahead no need to rush everything in in the first five minutes we're all out today with the sun and the white bands all come out of the woodwork Touch of the lever, and you've got that braking power there. Afternoon. Yeah, that's much better. Brakes are perfect now. That's really good news. They've slowly improved as they've bedded in. Because obviously I didn't change the disc, so it's new pads on old old discs. So it takes a little while for them to mate mate together. <laughs> oh dear. Not gonna miss me coming, are you? Oh, I was just feathering in the throttle then and the traction was just flashing like crazy. Traction level six, I think I could probably turn that down a little bit. It was quite cold when I rode this to the uh, MOT station. I think I can bang that down a little bit now. I don't need quite as much traction control as that. Even on the H2, you still get caught up behind white vans. <laughs> little thumbs up out the window there. He knows what he's done. What's that about taking it easy? Oh, it's a lunatic on two wheels. It is an incredible bike. Absolutely incredible bike. How much road do you want? All of it? That's what I thought. Well, let's calm it down now because that is all getting a bit too, uh, bit too crazy. Bit too crazy. You're doing 30 in a 50. Hello. What is lovely about this bike? It's just so smooth. I think that is when you first ride one of these, and they're all the same. All the bikes with this with this H2 engine in, this supercharged engine, should I say, they're all super, super smooth. I mean, straight fours are pretty smooth anyway, but these are just lovely. I mean, the gearboxes are nice. The clutch feels lovely. You know, you've got these expensive Brembo levers, which really feel really nice. The quality from the bike when you're riding it, you, you know, you can tell it's an expensive bike. It oozes, it oozes a sense of quality about it. Just the feel of everything. Everything, you know, everything's just lovely to touch. It's, it is something special, this. And it feels special to ride. Oh, well, there we go, guys. That was it, really. Just to uh, give you a little update on how she's running. I will probably do a video when we go out with the lads again and get what, a few people have been asking, where's Wobble? Get Womble back on, bit of intercom action as we go out for a ride. We found a really good ride now down to uh, Cheddar Gorge. For me, to Cheddar Gorge, using that Calimoto app, there's a really good route, which and we can do it in the morning and be home for sort of one o'clock, keep Mrs. Chaps, Mrs. Ch Mrs. Chaps, Mrs. Chops happy. So I may take you along on our little uh, Cheddar Gorge run. Because it's, 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 if you haven't been to Cheddar Gorge, it's lovely. I've not been before until I went on the bikes, and it's really, really lovely down there. I know Grizz is Grizz's local and Taffy's local stomping ground. So maybe even meet up with Grizz for a breakfast or something at the gorge, and he can sort of follow us home to a, as far as he wants to. But uh, yeah, that's going to come. So that'll be a spring ride, meet up with the lads, out for a bit of fun on the bikes. <laughs> that sounds amazing. But thanks for watching guys, really appreciate it as always, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. This is power level one, which is full power. 
I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. 